What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and in today's video, I'm going to be going back to a program that I showcased previously in another video of mine. In this other video, I basically showed you how you can use your Android device as another screen for your Windows computer. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use a secondary PC or a laptop, notebook, etc. as a secondary screen for your PC. So I'll be guiding you through that in this video. And of course, if you're interested in using an Android device, make sure to check the description down below for a link to the video on that. So with that aside, let's get to it. First of all, open up your browser of choice and head across to spacedesk.net. And no, this isn't a sponsored video. This is purely just one of the software applications that I showcased seems to be completely free and seems to work pretty well. Of course, there are probably other solutions that you can look into. This is just what I'm showcasing in this video. At the very top, simply click download, you'll be taken down and the download section will expand. From here, we'll be downloading the Space Desk driver software for Windows, primary PC, bracket server, and installing it on the main computer that you'd like to add another screen to. Simply download either the 64-bit or 32-bit. I've got more than four gigs of RAM, so I'll be downloading the 64-bit version. While this is happening, I'll simply scroll down further and locate Space Desk Viewer Software for Secondary Machine Client. This will be downloading and installing on our second computer. I'll simply click Download for Windows 32 64-bit. This one is the same for both versions. Then I'll open up the driver software that we downloaded first and installing it on the PC I'd like to add a screen to. I'll click Next, read through the license terms, accept, Next, choose an install location, next, and make sure this is checked. Then hit next again and install. After being prompted for admin, the software will install and if you have a third party antivirus or firewall on your computer, it'll most likely tell you this. Note that you'll need to allow spacedeskservice.exe through this firewall or temporarily turn it off while you're using the software. For me, a quicker solution, as I'll just be using this temporarily, is to simply disable my firewall entirely. Though, if you're going to use this more than just once, make sure you allow the program through the firewall and don't turn it off completely. Then simply head across to your secondary device. I'm simply remote controlling my laptop that's next to me for this video. I'll simply go ahead and open up the installer that we downloaded second, the server or secondary viewer. I'll open it up, click next, read through the license terms, accept, next, choose an install location, next, and then install. After allowing it admin, I'll simply check launch space desk viewer and then click finish. At this point, the program is now open and we're able to connect to our main PC. Because it's on the same local network, it's appearing on the list down here automatically. However, if it's not on the same local router, then you may have to click the plus over here and type in the IP address manually. Note that for each router or step along the internet that you go, you'll need to make sure that everything's port forwarded and allowed through. Because they're both connected to the same switch, I can simply find it on the list over here or enter the IP address or host name here. So now that we've got this set up, all we have to do is simply click on our second computer over here to connect to it. I'll go ahead and make this remote desktop viewer smaller just so we can see exactly what happens. Setting my laptop to 720p will get a much better view of exactly what we're looking at. So now that we've got it installed, before we connect, let's go ahead and open up our display settings so we can see exactly what's happening as it happens. Simply press start and then click the settings icon, then heading across to system and finally display. So leaving both this window open and my laptop's view over here, let's go ahead and click on my main PC on my laptop to connect to it. Upon doing this, you'll see a new screen pop up on your secondary device. This is a live view of your main desktop PC or whatever has the server installed on it. If we have a look over here on the display section, you can see a fourth display that is now connected. This we can reposition and of course adjust the display resolution down over here. It'll only go between two options, usually the maximum size of the display on your secondary device and one that's slightly less than that. We can of course change the orientation and choose whether to duplicate or extend displays. I'll leave everything as is and leave it on the very far right of my computer. Clicking apply, it'll move all my screens around and your screens may go black for a second. But if we have a look over here, my mouse is on my main desktop PC. If we push it to the right, it'll be on screen number two and right again, it'll eventually pop up onto the fourth monitor over here, which is our remote view. If we bring it back to the left, it'll go into my second monitor and then back to here. And of course, that's basically it. On the secondary device, we can head across to file where we can disconnect or exit, view to enable or disable status bar and full screen, 
functionality. We have some options over here, but they seem to be grayed out for some reason. I would assume we'd have to disconnect first. Settings, we have more over here, and we have some help here. I'll go ahead and file disconnect. After doing that, my laptop disconnects from my main PC, and that fourth monitor vanishes. Having a look at my laptop screen once again, we can look at functionality, and these options are now available. Same with settings up here. Resolutions and compression quality are options that you might want to play with to get a better connection or better view between the two computers. Note that it'll work best when everything's plugged into the same local high-speed switch or even directly into each other. If you'd like higher quality, raise the color depth and raise the quality over here. We also have an FPS option down here, which is also useful. For a physical connection, you'd usually want to have it 60 FPS, medium high quality of say 90 to 100, and high quality for color depth. Besides that, simply clicking OK, basically this is enough to use as another monitor on your main desktop PC or wherever you have this installed. To close out of the viewer, simply exit the program or file exit. There's nowhere else that we need to close this. If we disconnect from my laptop, we'll go back to my main PC. Then to close the server, we'll double click on the icon in our start bar and the program will appear. From here, we can click the three dots under the monitor and change it to off. Then, at this point, no other devices will be able to connect to our main PC and add themselves as another display. As far as I know, as long as the software is running, things should work properly, but there doesn't seem to be a way to close out of it entirely other than opening up your task manager, locating it, and ending it yourself by ending these two tasks over here. This file over here, C, Windows, System32, Space Desk, Service.exe, is the program that we need to make sure is allowed through our Windows or third-party firewall. But with all of that aside, if you'd like to get rid of it completely, pressing start, locating Space Desk Server, right click, uninstall, will open up this window over here. Of course, we can also press start, type in control panel, open it up, head across to the programs, uninstall a program section, and we'll be back here. Then simply locating Space Desk by clicking anywhere and typing in space, we'll get taken straight to it. Double clicking, yes, and yes once again when prompted for admin, the program will be uninstalled. That's about it. But anyways, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. My name is Vintech Nobo here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.